And uh, if you have any questions, uh, particular to Gina, you can actually join the community to learn more about um, AI and new research. Um, so what I'll be sharing is really uh, from the perspective of like, uh, you know, really just playing with this tool for fun and educational uh, purposes. So um, what I would like to do is actually um, really start the presentation by building the search app uh, on the fly. So you can really get to see how easy it is and how quickly it can be done. Um, and then I'm also going to talk a bit about why we have decided, what are the advantages of neurosearch um, and how embeddings is a way to actually enable cross-model and multi-model searches um, in any problem domain of interest and also how you can go from POC to production uh, and some thoughts on the implications of AI uh, moving to the future. Uh. So what I'll do is really, um, yeah, just quickly hop over to the Gina Cloud uh, interface and start to set up a search app. Um, okay, so I've actually already uploaded my data onto the Gina previously. And what uh, you see, what I'm about to kind of like build a demo on, uh, I think I need to pull this, okay. Uh, so, um, uh, so what I'm about to do is uh, this particular data set has already been uploaded. So we'll be building the search app based on about uh, close to 4,000 images in the NGS collection. And um, what, what I've done previously is convert into the doc array, which is a unique GINA data structure for handling and processing multimodal data, i.e. image, text, videos, sound, and so on. So that's going to enable us to then subsequently build um, search on top of it. And all you have to do uh, on the GINA Cloud AI interface is actually just to the, create a new search app Right, and we're going to be making use of uh, this data set that we've already preloaded. So uh, the data source is the doc array, and then yeah, this particular data set. And you'll be able to choose, so for the purpose of this demo, I'll just use the um, title of the artwork uh, as, uh, as something to index over as well as the image, right? The image of the artwork itself. And you'll also be able to kind of like uh, filter over different fields that you have in your data set as well. And then you hit deploy. So what's going to happen after this is essentially the Gina Cloud AI will take care of uh, indexing and coding your uh, data for you. So all we have to do now is basically wait for the um, server to be spun up. Yeah. So now I'll go back to, uh, I'll backtrack a bit to, wait. I'll backtrack a bit to explain a bit more about what we were doing exactly. Yeah. I think yeah, you'll find that getting your projection right in present uh, in conferences is always most challenging compared to even building a neural search app. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, uh, those were the two things that we just did. And uh, now uh, maybe let me talk a bit about why uh, I was inspired to work on this problem in the first place. So um, I'm actually part of a team running a culture tech accelerator at National Gallery Singapore. Uh, so for those of you who are in town or if you are local, uh, please visit us, right? Um, so the problem that we're trying to solve here is really that uh, at the gallery, we actually have an existing online collection search portal. Uh, it's making use of elastic search symbolic uh, search capabilities, uh, which essentially means that 
if you do not already know what you are looking for uh, in the title or in the actors or whatever, you won't be able to find the artwork that you may uh, be looking for, which kind of like defeats the whole purpose of search. Um, and the reality of this is that we have a very limited set of uh, metadata about our collection, which is close to 10,000 works. And our curators do not have the time to actually, you know, tag everything to make it more searchable for keyword-based matches as well. Uh, not to mention that it's highly the most interesting job in the world for a human to be doing. Right? So, so we are really faced with this problem of how do I take the existing data that I have and the very uh, limited metadata and make it more accessible, more searchable for um, people. Right. Also, given the fact that I think audiences and users are also uh, growing to be more and more accustomed to more, um, you know, new, newer ways of searching data, not just limited by text, but sometimes you may want to find something that is close to something, something that you've seen before, right, by uploading an image, for example. So these are all the different things that we weren't able to do um, with the current uh, collection search uh, portal. Also because everything is kind of like in British uh, English, uh, the moment you spell something uh, with a typo in, in another form of uh, English, you won't be able to find uh, what you're looking for as well. So anyway, uh, it was really this observation that kind of like got me interested in looking at how neural search could be potentially applied to solve this problem. And I, I guess like, you know, unlike um, other institutions like Macari, it's kind of like we are faced with this problem of, do I spend two years having an entire team of engineers and AI developers uh, be a re-ranking algorithm, right? Or do I um, try to find something that I can quickly prototype and go to production uh, as quickly as possible? So that, that's also why uh, I think that kind of like search led us to uh, Gina um, to really start to explore what are the possibilities of uh, neural search for uh, locating our works, yeah. And I think the core idea behind this is really um, uh, what they call embeddings, right? So I, de I decided that uh, cats are cuter than dogs when I realized that you do not need to walk a cat. And essentially the whole idea behind this is that um, anything that we can think of, right, in the n number of dimensions can be represented in, in the, transform using mathematical equations and represented in the 2D space like this. So this uh, text and images can be represented within the same space. And a cute cat, I mean the text is going to be closer to these two images of the cat that we see here. And that's going to be some distance away from the dog. And that's really kind of like the fundamental idea behind a lot of these similarity searches that we are doing uh, with um, the different modalities of content that we have. Yeah, um, to give you a better visualization of that, so this is uh, a embedding uh, projector applied to, yeah, applied to about 500 works from our collection. So uh, using the TSNA algorithm, we transformed it into this 3D space which then iterates and starts to cluster similar uh, visual images together, just based on images, right? So you kind of like see that the machine starts to put uh, calligraphic works together uh, and then portraits from another cluster and so on and so forth. So uh, this can actually easily be extended to include uh, other dimensions or other attributes as well. And the whole idea is uh, when the user has a search query, Right, that's going to be compared against what we already have in the embedding space, and then a similarity search is performed. So uh, that's uh, kind of like the gist of what drives the neural search uh, in our context. And actually, uh, I mean, just to kind of like take a step back to what, what was done before setting up the search ad, uh, and this can all be done in uh, less than 50 lines of code. Uh, and I have to like credit Max from the Gina team for helping me with this as well. Lah. But essentially, uh, Gina is able to kind of like how you abstract away a lot of the complexities in terms of uh, deploying a neural search app in production, right? So, so what, what we're doing here is actually really using this data class uh, API to represent multi-model documents. Um, again, like it could be an artwork, with an image and text and so on and so forth. 
So, so you uh, create this data class, and basically we are then able to leverage the Docker Race full API to do uh, whatever that you've just seen that we did, right? To actually embed and search and store and transfer the documents. And then uh, after that, we basically then instantiate this data class with our actual data and cast them to a document. Um, it's also kind of like worth noting that uh, there are also more complex features to the GNAS doc array, right? You can actually nest your data set so that um, I can have an artwork that is part of a collection. I think they're also building, uh, working on something that allows you to search over multiple collections as well. But at the moment, it's kind of like uh, limited to top level search. Law. Yeah, and then of course, uh, as we know, generally uh, an article have different levels of um, granularity to it, right? There's kind of like the paragraph, and then there's the sentence, and then there's the individual words. So if you want to be able to um, search over different granularities, depending on your uh, problem of interest, you can actually also do that uh, with um, Gina. Yeah, so essentially, um, later we'll be able to take a look at the demo app that was actually built. And of course, after you've uh, built your demo, you may be interested to think about, now then how do I actually put it into production? So my background is in economics, and I tend to um, you know, look at a lot of these things from a point of view of a trilemma in the sense that unless you have unlimited budgets, usually you kind of like have to pick two out of three things, right? So in our case, uh, in the case of a, uh, what, what is more like a public organization, um, without an in-house tech team of engineers and developers, um, I mean, we tend to, or probably tend to fall more on the cost effectiveness and performance side of this triangle, right? So you kind of like lose that sovereignty or be able to build and maintain your own models in-house, uh, which kind of like has that trade-off where if the API or the service they are using goes under, and it has happened before, right, uh, your entire thing kind of like falls apart. Um, I think that, that's also why for this reason that I'm actually uh, a lot more interested in open source models or open source products like this, right, because uh, at least there's, there's some way to maybe try to recover what, what you need to recover even if the uh, uh, company goes under or whatever because it's kind of like out in the open, right? Um, so cost effectiveness uh, is also really important to us then because um, generally I think uh, comparatively the cost of um, using a managed service will probably be more cost effective than having to maintain an in-house team of uh, engineers and developers. Yeah, um, but I mean, at the moment, I think these new forms of search, as everyone knows, are still a bit more pricey compared to the um, older forms of search. So there's definitely uh, a lot of room for improvement in, in this area as well. Okay, um, and then as far as performance is concerned, to me, anything that uh, is an improvement upon the current search portal is, uh, is, uh, is high performing. So that checks off the um, performance uh, box for me. Like. Yeah, so um, again, the, the cool thing to me about Gina is really that it's able to abstract away a lot of these things that you see over here. And all that we have to do is focus on um, defining the document and understanding our data and representing it properly, right? Uh, with that, let me just do a quick uh demo and in the interest of time maybe i'll just yeah play this video okay. yeah so this um so this is the i mean this will be an app that that, that was this uh, deployed and essentially when you do like a text-based search such as a uh, rabbit you kind of like see they also understands that a bunny could also be a rabbit Right, and then you can also look for more abstract concepts like, I don't know, like angry men marching, and it turns your results about people going on strikes or people questioning, uh, where's my job? Uh, yeah, and you can also perform searches with uh, images and actually mix image and text as well. So if you've been to the recent Van Gogh exhibition and want to look for flowers from the national collection, uh, you can do that, um, and you can also uh, refine this query with a text, 
right? Maybe you're looking for flowers, but you want red flowers that looks like Van Gogh's uh, piece of work. And you can do that. And you will see that it's actually doing matching against like text and image. So that's kind of like how the whole multi-modality and cross-modality comes about. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think, I hope that's given you a better, a, 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 an idea of what can be built with Gina. And then, and essentially, um, you know, if there are like other, other search apps of interest or things that you're trying to solve pertaining to search, I think uh, there's a lot that these uh, platforms can do, right? So, so Yonji has a lot of like crazy smirks in this uh, drama. If you want to find like which episode this particular screenshot is from, you can build that. Or if you want to buy stuff based on uh, a photo of something that you've seen, you can also do that and so on and so forth. Yeah. So anyway, I think um, to conclude, um, I think we're really moving from uh, this age of like single model searches and AI to one that's a lot more multi-model, right? And uh, it's probably also worth noting that actually the uh, text image embeddings used in the search that I demonstrated is based on OpenAI's uh, clip, which has also been used in stable diffusion, mid-journey, so if you're into that sort of stuff, like runway, has also recently released a model that allows you to uh, generate videos based on text, image, and so on and so forth. So uh, while living in a time when in the not too distant future, right, a single person will be able to generate like, a whole K-pop group. Uh, they can chat review, they can sing and dance and whatever uh, with the help of multi-model AI. But of course, um, I hope that that wouldn't be kind of like the only use cases that we can think of for this tech. There's definitely a lot of uh, problems and challenges in the world that we can uh, use multimodal AI to solve. So if you are interested in building multimodal AI, um, uh, you can join the Gina community. And also, um, for those of you who are based in Singapore and overseas, if you are interested in solving problems pertaining to um, AI as applied in art, right? In fact, you do not need to be passionate about art in order to build with AI for art. Uh, you can also join the YLab Discord, which is the culture tech accelerator I was talking about. And I'll be more than happy to, uh, I mean, further conversations about how we can use AI for good together. Yeah, thank you.